Hey y'all, welcome back to Life More Abundantly with Chancia. As always, I pray that you are doing well. And I just wanted to come on here to share this word that the Lord had spoke to me actually on yesterday. And so God had been ministering to me prior even to yesterday about this being a time of judgment, okay? This is not a word of doom and gloom for God's children, but this is a word for those that have been trying to go against God's children and for those that claim to be Christians, but behind closed doors, you are far from it, okay? So you proclaim God, Jesus Christ, with your mouth, your heart is far from him. And God has been gracious and kind and still is being gracious and kind um, because at the core of him, he loves all of us, but he will only tolerate so much wickedness and, and evil, okay? So God had been ministering to me about the times of judgment, okay? And he led me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 46, And it speaks on the judgment on Egypt in the chapters prior to and even following chapter 46 also speak on judgment for other nations, okay? But 46 in particular, God has spoken to the prophet Jeremiah and set him to prophesy against the nations, okay? And I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I do want to read the verses that stood out to me and the Holy Spirit began to speak, okay? So verse number one says, the word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah, the prophet against the nations. Verse 10 says, for this is a day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge himself on his adversaries. The sword shall devour, it shall be satiated and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts has a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Okay, verse 10 alone, God is saying, vengeance is mine, okay? There is a day of vengeance that is upon us, okay? Do not worry about those who try to blot out your name, those who try to shame and guilt you, those who try to attack you with no apparent reason, okay? God is saying that I will take care of it, okay? And we will see these things happen swiftly, okay? When the Lord avenges his people, it will happen swiftly, okay? Then he let me down to verse number 15 and 16, okay? It says, why are you valiant men swept away? They did not stand because the Lord drove them away. So valiant deals with heroic soldiers, brave soldiers, courageous soldiers, okay? And God is saying even the enemy's greatest soldiers, the bravest soldiers in the enemy's army, those that have been trying to come up against you, those that have been trying to come up against the people of God, the body of Christ, even those strong men will not be left standing because the Lord will drive them away. Verse 16 says, he made many fall. Yes, one fell upon another. And they said, arise, let us go back to our own people into the land of our nativity from the oppressing sword. Okay. So they are going to try to flee. They are going to try to get away but God will not allow it, okay? They have oppressed the people of God too long. They have attacked and they have antagonized the people of God for way too long. People of God, hear me. God is fighting on behalf of you. Be encouraged. This is a word of encouragement for those that have set their face to the Lord, for those that are in the body of Christ and have submitted themselves to God. This is a word of encouragement and a word of assurance to you that God has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten you, okay? I want to go down to verse number 21. It says, also her mercenaries are in her midst like fat bulls, for they also are turned back. They have fled away together. They did not stand, for the day of their calamity had come upon them, the time of their punishment, okay? It says in the beginning part of verse number 21, also her mercenaries are in her midst like fat bulls. Mercenaries are um, very well-trained soldiers, hired soldiers, okay? So they're like the best of the best. And God is saying even the best of the best, again, of the enemy's camp, they may be many, they may be numerous in number, okay? But God's power and his authority and his rank okay? They will turn back from God, okay? They will try to flee from God. But also, again, it's it's telling us again that they will not stand. For the day of their calamity has come upon them, the time of their punishment, okay? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse number 25 says, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel says, behold, I will bring punishment 
on Ammon of No and Pharaoh in Egypt with their gods, small g, and their kings, Pharaoh and those who trust in him, okay? So destruction is not only coming to those leading the enemy's army, okay? It's also coming to those who put their trust in these people, okay? There are wicked rulers in the nation, in the world, and God is saying, be very careful who you put your trust in. Your trust as a child of God should only be within Yahweh. It should only be within Yeshua. It should only be within Jesus Christ, the Lord, our God. It should not be within anything or anyone else. And for those that have put their trust within certain people, okay, and you know that their lifestyle is wicked and you know the fruit that comes forth from their life, God is saying you will be judged, okay? You have a time to repent now. If you do not repent, you will be judged along with them. These nations such as Egypt, okay, they worshiped sun gods, okay, and several other gods, okay, which means that they were pagan. The word of God tells us that we should serve the Lord God only. There is only but one Lord, one faith, one baptism, okay? Idolatry is a no-no. Paganism is a no-no, okay? God is a very jealous God. His word tells us that. There is a time of judgment coming forth in the land upon individuals and nations like this. And then verse number 27 and 28, as we close, it says, but do not fear, O my servant Jacob, and do not be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest, and be at ease. No one shall make him afraid. Okay, no one shall make you afraid. No one shall make you afraid. Again, verse number 28, it says, do not fear. God literally just implemented in verse number 27, do not fear. And then he's re-implementing it in verse number 28. Do not fear. People of God, do not fear. Have no fear. The only fear that we have as children of God is the healthy fear of the Lord, okay? And that's out of reverence and deep respect. It's not the kind of fear that makes you afraid to talk to God or to repent before God. It's it's respect and reverence, okay? Adoration unto God. And so verse number 28, it says, Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord, for I am with you, for I will make a complete end of all the nations to which I have driven you, but I will not make a complete end of you. I will rightly correct you, for I will not leave you wholly unpunished, okay? And then this verse in particular, God is saying, even for my remnant that needs correction, um, I will correct you, but it will be in love, okay? God will correct us, but it will be in love. His word tells us that those whom he chastises, those whom he corrects and disciplines, he does it because he loves you. And it's just as a mother and a father to a natural son or daughter, when your children are acting out, it is your duty as their parent to correct them in love, to discipline them in love, to put them on the right path. And that is the love that the father has for us. That's where our motherly and fatherly love stems from, is from God's love for us as his children, okay? So God's correction will come to his children, but it will be in love, okay? This is the word of the Lord for today that judgment has come for wicked rulers, for those that have set themselves against the body of Christ, for those that have set themselves against the will and the plan and the agenda of God. Please know that you will never be able to stop and hinder what God is doing in the earth. You will either get with the program or you will get wiped out, okay? And God is not playing when it comes to his body. He's not playing when people put their mouths on you and then they're constantly trying to dispel and use and abuse you. God is coming to see about you. Be encouraged.